Hi and welcome to today's video where we'll be covering the flight instruments. So here we have a basic six pack, which is the uh, basic six instruments you'll find on any propeller aircraft. And instruments give pilots an understanding of the aircraft heading, altitude, speed, and other crucial information to conduct a safe flight. So we'll start with the compass. So this is a magnetic compass. It tells the pilot the magnetic heading the aircraft uh, is flying and it's based on magnetic north, which is different from true north because magnetic north actually moves throughout the year. So the magnetic compass has to actually be calibrated uh, regularly to make sure it is constantly showing you the right magnetic heading. We then have the airspeed indicator, which works with the pitot tube. And the pitot tube measures ram air pressure. And ram air pressure, also called total air pressure, is composed of two things, dynamic pressure and static pressure. So the pitot tube also has a static port. And by deducting the static pressure from the total air pressure formula, we're then left with the dynamic pressure. And the dynamic pressure is what gives us our indicated airspeed, which is what's shown on the airspeed indicator. The indicated airspeed is different to, from our true airspeed and our ground speed. Our airspeed indicator is also color coded to give us different speeds. So the bottom of the white arc is called your VSO speed, your stall speed with your flaps out. The top of the green arc is your VS1 speed, your stall speeds with your flaps in. The top of the white arc is your VFE speed, the speed at which you can extend your flaps. Then you have the green arc, and then between the green arc and the yellow arc you have your VNO speed, your normal operating speed. In the yellow arc, you should start to be careful because you're reaching the red dashed line, your VNE speed, your never exceed speed. So you should never pass this airspeed or you can encounter structural damage. Next, we have our attitude indicator, which gives us an uh, indication whether we're pitching up or down or rolling left or right. And it's very important for when you find yourself uh, in a cloud because you can easily get disorientated. So, the blue means you're uh, increasing altitude, so remember blue is sky. Brown is decreasing altitude, so brown is ground. We also have different dashed lines, which gives us our uh, rate of bank. So we have a 10 degree bank turn, a 20 degree bank turn, 30 degree bank turn, 45 degree bank turn, and then a 60 degree bank turn. The altimeter gives us an altitude information and is based on presetting a local pressure setting in inches of mercury or hectopascals. We use hectopascals in most of Europe and Australia. By then measuring the static pressure, we can deduce the altitude we're at because an increase in altitude means a decrease in static pressure. The altimeter has some aneroid capsules. As we increase in altitude, the aneroid capsules expand and we're shown an increase in altitude. And vice versa, when we descend, the aneroid capsules compress and we have a decrease in altitude on our altimeter. The big arrow shows us the hundreds of feet and the small arrow shows us our thousands of feet. So we have 100, 200, 300 feet or 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet and so forth. Then we have our turn coordinator, which gives us an indication of whether uh, we are in a left or right turn and whether we're in a slip or slide situation with the inclinometer. So to make sure we're in a level turn, we should always make sure that the ball is in the middle or else we could be slipping or skidding. If we keep our wings on the left or right dash line, we're maintaining a rate one turn. Rate one turn is a three degrees a second. So to make a complete 360 turn would actually take two minutes. Next, we have our heading indicator, which is based on our magnetic compass. However, it doesn't su suffer from uh, the errors which the compass has, which is normally lag errors from acceleration, deceleration, or from turning. And you'll see this in more detail when you actually do the practical side of the flying. Our vertical speed indicator works by measuring the difference in static pressure over time. The faster the static pressure is changing, the faster we're climbing or descending. So next we have the tachometer. The tachometer shows the rotational shaft speed of our engine and is measured in rotations per minute. So we have 500 RPM, 1000, 1500, 2000, 2500 and it's telling us how fast the engine is actually rotating. 
In straight and level, we should maintain uh, the RPM setting within the green sector, and we should never exceed the red dashed line as we're overstretching the engine at this uh, part. The RPM is very important because at different stages of flight we'll have different RPM settings. For example, in a descent we'll have to decrease our RPM setting or else we'll be flying at too high of an airspeed. The Australian Aviation Authority has a set of compulsory instruments that we must have to, co to conduct a legal visual flight. The instruments include a compass, an airspeed indicator, a turn coordinator, an altimeter, an outside air temperature measuring device and a timepiece which can include your clock which has an indication of hours, minutes and seconds. And here's a brief introduction to the flight instruments.